All right, guys, Big Pop Timo here. We're back with another episode of Railroads Online. We are going to extend our track just a little bit. We are up here at the logging camp. And as we sit here with the train, we got three more cars to load logs onto, but we don't really have quite enough track to do that. So we need to do a little bit of an extension here. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm not going to cut down a ton of trees. But I'm going to cut down a few, and we're going to run ourselves a nice little extension so that we can pull our train far enough up to grab what we need to. Now, what I'm going to do here is, since there is a sudden change of elevation here, I could do this all as just dirt, but I'm actually going to do it as the stone wall, because I think it will look better. We are going to extend that out to right about here. Oh, and I think I just got myself stuck in the wall. I did. So if you ever find yourself stuck in the wall, you can always come in here and delete some groundwork. Ironically enough, I think we have more than enough of an extension. I didn't need that last piece, but we do need to extend the rails. So what we're going to do here is we are going to grab this, this, that. And that should be plenty. I'm going to leave a little bit without the rail there. So if we do run too far, we'll derail without falling off the edge. Shouldn't be too, too big of a deal. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the train. I'm going to pull forward. A little bit. Gotta put that into forward. Want it going nice and slow. We don't want to do this quickly. And I'm going to slow roll the train forward because I'm going to show you another trick, too. All right, we're going to turn that off. What happened last time is I pulled the train too far forward. And I missed my loading location. And it's actually rather hard to see where these are all going to be. So I'm going to show you a nice little trick for how to adjust for that. Like I said, I'm going to let this just slow roll forward. Get those cars hopefully in a perfect spot. All right. I'm going to hit full brakes there, and we're going to come take a look at this real quick. I might actually be a little too far forward on that one. So let's see which one this loads, and let's see which one this loads. See, that one loaded that back car. So that was, in fact, a little too far. It does get a little tricky at times, uh, but there are little tricks doing this. The first time you do it is always the hardest. See, that actually loaded onto that one because the train moved with the weight. Has to be super difficult, obviously. Loaded that back one again. All 
Alright, the last car is full. It is loading that rear one again. So it's got that nice and full, but we actually want this a little bit further back. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some ground markers in here. And what I always do is I use the visual of the gap between things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some groundwork and I'm going to do a stone wall. Just like so. And I'm going to utilize all of these wheels to do my markers. Now, I actually want, next time I pull the train here, I don't want the wheels over the mark. I want the gap between the cars at this marker. But I'm going to utilize these. as a consistent visual to be able to do that. So now when I get into the train, you can see right here, what I want to do is I want to back this train up a little bit And I want this gap right here to be right there. Oh, this thing is just pushing straight through. That's a little bit better. Now when we do this crane, it'll drop it onto this car. This one will drop onto this one. Just gives you a nice little visual cue for how to do things. All right, we're going to load up this last one, and then we are going to take the train back to the sawmill. And we are finally going to make some money. As you see right there, we've only got $800 in our account. We are currently experience level 4 because we've cut down an awful lot of trees. All of our rail cars are nice and full, so now it's time to jump back in to our train. We do have a little bit of fuel. Our fire is nice and good to go. We need to put it in reverse. Pop up a little power, take off the brakes, and we're going to back our way all the way down there. Remember, the engines don't really care which direction they're traveling. <clears throat> Now this is our first time traveling with a load through any of our turns, and it's our first time going in this direction, so we are going to take things a little bit slow. The end goal is to basically have everything straight and smooth so that you can do things at speed, uh, but you still have to worry about the change in physics when you put a load on your cars. And you also have to worry about the change in physics as opposed to pushing as and pulling.
All right, the cars didn't seem to have any problem with any of the turn. Out to Shebe. Once we get on the railroad trestle, it is going to start to be a downhill grade. So we will pick up speed. Even with no power. That's dragging us down the hill pretty well. Gravity works. Betsy, go. Now we need to bring these cars in line with this section here. Bear in mind that is a pretty decent load of timber on there, so it's going to take us a while to stop. Should be able to do these four or five at a time. And come down here to this one, line up with that. And it's entered is now toggle to unload. They did change that. Used to be dragged down. It actually shows the weight of the car too. That's new. Okay, loading those. That was 120 bucks. So 12 of those made us 120 bucks, $10 a piece. That, unload that. Back up a little bit further, unload these two. And you'll see all the logs are now floating in here. Sawmill will start production of lumber.
All right, we have eleven hundred and sixty dollars now. So we made three hundred and sixty bucks, and you can see that there are currently twenty-seven out of a hundred logs. You can put a hundred logs in there at a time, but it is going down in processing. Now, while we're here, I'm going to run around to the other side and show you what this does. Now, over on this side. When you look back at that side, now the lumber has 24 out of 100. Beams is now at 26 out of 100. And you can watch the progress bar. Now, as long as these are not full, once this gets up to 100, it will stop production. So if you're only taking one type of material out of here at a time, you can take a hundred of the lumber out of here, but if you leave the beams, if you have a hundred beams, it won't produce any more lumber. So you are going to have to move them to get things to keep going. But you can stack those up to a hundred and then put a hundred more logs in here and it'll, it'll be ready to go. But in the meantime, we need to make more money. So we're going to need to go back up to the logging camp. Now we are down on our fuel, so we're going to grab some toss those in there. Make sure to put our reverser back the forward direction. And away we go. Back up the hill. And that is how you start to make money in railroads online. loud for a minute. I'm going to run this at full power. Just to see what happens. So that was fine. I know this turn is going to be a little rough. So I'm going to turn off the power. I'm just going to let it roll. I don't think it'll derail, but it is possible.
Nope. Came in nicely. Slowed us down pretty good. Now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and utilize our visuals. Try and get this first car to stop right in here. Alright, now we should be able to just load this one and this one. And it should load that car and this car. Now, on most of the other production areas, there will be a gap between uh, the, the cranes. The cranes are a little bit wider everywhere else, so you'd be able to load this car and this car at the same time and then pull them up to do the next ones. But the logs tend to be the closest of the cranes. Even the cordwood cranes over on the other side are spaced further apart. All right, now we should be able to put this car right here in this gap. But we can put this car in this gap to use that as the visual. And if we stop that right about there, that should have put both of those right where we need them. Be prepared to spend a lot of time at the cranes. Because you're going to be doing an awful lot of back and forth. You start out going from the logging camp to the sawmill. And then from here we're going to end down at the smelter next. And the freight depot. Now, I didn't do the mark up here uh, because I hadn't gotten the train quite into the correct position. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use this gap right here as our visual.
And if that is correct, we'll come in and we'll put another. Looks like it's fine. We'll put another marker up there. Yep, perfect. Now these logs can be taken three different places. You can take them to the sawmill to have them cut. You can bring them to one of the firewood supply stations, or you can bring these to the freight depot to sell. And they all sell for $10 a piece. If you take it to the sawmill, it'll make beams and lumber. If you bring it to the firewoods, it will create firewood for you. If you bring it to the freight depot, it just sells it. Anything you bring to the freight depot just sells the material. All right, so those are all good. Let's go put our groundwork stone wall up here. There's our visual reference for that. Whoops. Now it's hard to see, but these, these two cranes are actually just ever so slightly further apart than those two over there. Now the cordwood, what's important about the cordwood is this sells at a decent amount. Uh, the cars that hold them actually hold eight stacks, so you'll get $80 per load as opposed to 60 if you're selling cordwood. But we're going to need to bring cordwood down to the smelter. Um, so we're eventually going to need to be able to bring this material there. But you can also bring this directly to the um, freight yard for cash, uh, which is a good way to, to make some quick money. And we will deal with that in the future. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this load back to the sawmill. Because we need more lumber and beams started. Let's back this bad boy up. Now you do want to be careful pushing a load through a curve. You don't want to try and do that too fast. That's a good way to derail. 24% is not too bad though. Now, if you do find yourself derailing through your turns more often than not, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to smooth out your curves and make sure you don't have any short sections of track. The shorter the section of track, the more likely you are to derail on it. Make sure you don't have any janky joints between things. Blah, 
off a little steam. Coming on into the sawmill. We are pulling some weight for sure. These guys unloaded. All right, two successful loads brought to the sawmill. We are currently sitting at $1,520, not too shabby. Currently have 30 logs floating. Let's go see where we're at with the timber or the lumber and the rails. Now these materials, they stack up pretty quickly. Currently sitting at 90. Ninety on both of them. So looking at that, we would probably be able to bring two more loads of logs before this would be filled up. Because that sawmill is gonna stop operations. Pretty soon. Yeah, we could bring two more loads. We still have 24 logs floating. It'll stop pulling logs in because it can't cut anymore. Uh, so we're going to have to either start pulling things out of that side, uh, which we can use the different, the different cars all do different things too. So this is the type that we have here. This one only does logs and steel pipes. The next type of car will do lumber, raw iron, rails, or beams. And then this one will do cordwood and oil barrels. So the next cars that we're going to want to grab are either these, the Tier 2s, or the Tier 3s. We do the Tier 3s, that would be because we want to start moving cordwood uh, to sell. $60 a load for the first two types and $80 a load for the, the third. Uh, gives you an idea of how you're going to be making money. And like I said, it's not very quick or anything else like that. Um, but we have to go all the way back to the freight yard to do that as well. So I'm going to take the train back to the freight yard. We are already 
in reverse and we got a nice little long distance to go but that's going to be it for this episode guys thanks again for all the love and support you guys have been absolutely amazing if you like the video make sure you give it the thumbs up if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel it doesn't cost you a thing it means the world to me help the channel grow click that notification get notified every time big pop team posts new content or goes live till next time guys i lay her on damn tracks